I don't think I've mentioned this on my own channel, so it's a kind of a Thrift Dwellers exclusive, but... What up YouTube, Nate here, Buster, another Versus series video. Uh, this is the second time shooting this one actually. Our heads got cut off the, the first one. Half the, the time it's my mouth talking to the camera. <laughs> this guy's a perfectionist really, he'll do two or three edits of one video. Okay, thank you guys very much for supporting Burning Toys and supporting us on uh, the last Versus video. If you haven't seen that one, check it out. Burning Toys, really super cool YouTuber. Lester likes awesome. He awesome. does arcades. Check him out. Tell them we sent you. One of the things we want to have happen is people start responding to the questions that we ask. And actually, Kid Shryuken, our first Versus, answered one of the questions, which is your favorite SNES platformer. And he answered, he had a hard time between Super Castlevania 4 and Mega Man X. Lester, what's your, which one would you say is the better of the two? Super Castlevania 4. It's a good game. It's an awesome game. I told you, the noodle whip wielding no. thing pisses me off a little bit. Best. The I like my straight. Of the you I like can, mine straight. Yeah, but with the control, the whip going all over the place, you can just defeat That's not how. It. Today, we are versing the master himself. I said it before. We went to the mountains of Brandon, stroking his beard thusly. I think he said he was going to shave his beard. And we officially want you to have the Fu Manchu. Hey, folks, I'm 64 bit Matthew. Uh, quick overview of my YouTube channel <laughs> I collect video games. I tend to post a fair amount of pickup videos, and for my pickup videos, I always tend to go hunting in the wild. I do, I try to do collaborations with other YouTubers from the gaming community. I do pick or pass videos where I review certain games, tell you if they're worth picking up or if you should pass on them. And I recently started a Let's Play of Action 52 uh, for the NES, which the Thrift Dwellers were kind enough to help set me up with, so thanks guys. So it is our good friend today, 64-bit Matthew. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> I wear this shirt in honor of him. The first day I met him, he wore a Punisher shirt, and I thought, this guy is dope. Look familiar, Matt? Anyways, how do you think Matt will do today, Lester? He will do... <laughs> Just whoa, jokes! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Friendly fighting. Okay. This is Thrift Dollar vs. If you haven't seen Thrift Dollar vs. before, we challenge you a YouTube member of the video game community with five questions. But this year, we think we agreed that the questions were supposed to be a little bit more tougher, yeah. a little bit more quirkier, and hopefully a lot more funner. <laughs> funner. Um, so yes, thrift all the verses. Feel free to comment yourself. I suppose nothing hurts you. Only pain. What is the greatest N64 game that's not Harvest related? Um, the reason that they threw that in there is just because my favorite game of all time is Harvest Moon 64 for the N64. So, clever way of wording that question, guys. Well done. While that's my favorite game of all time, I don't consider that to be the actual greatest N64 game ever. The game that I consider the greatest of all time, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I played this one a ton as a kid. I'm pretty sure most people with an N64 played this one a ton as a kid. Really well built, tons of hours you can put into it, and tons of replayability too. So while the N64 has a lot of great games, this one is by far the cream of the crop, the best of the N64. And his answer is pretty much spot on. Zelda Ocarina of Time. Hmm. Lester is not a big fan of the N64, I will say it right now. Oh yeah, I'm not. And if I had to choose one game myself, it'd probably be just Mario Kart 64. Oh, that game's awesome. I play that perfection until my fingers bled. I still think Majora's Mask was a touch more superior, had a little bit more interesting gameplay components. The mask's idea is awesome, and I, I just like the storyline better. Crumb Lab 64 win. There's almost different categories of reasons that they're bad characters. Uh, for example, you got Tingle from the Zelda franchise, and he's just a bad character just because kind of just annoying, kind of useless character, and 
you almost wonder why he's in the series almost, but I would probably have to go with Lester the Unlikely. When people play video games, they play it to get an experience that they probably wouldn't usually be able to get in real life. Like, you play video games so you can fight dragons and race speedboats and play Grand Theft Auto so you can like do mass destruction, you know. And then you get the game Lester the Unlikely, which is just basically a nerdy character who has terrible controls, um, terrible fighting, like, just ter he's just a terrible character. The AVGN did a review on it, so if you need more information you can always go check that out. It's just a poor game, poor character design, and yeah, just a terrible idea from the start. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it looks like uh, Matt's throwing us a double entendre there. Yeah. Lester, the unlikely. My worst design character, DMC Devil May Cry. You don't like The him. planning, the drawing of him, the design. You didn't like the faux hawk? I didn't like the faux hawk. Yeah, let's come back to Twilight. That's a good answer. Oh. I really hate Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 2. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just jaded because I wanted to play it to play Snake, and you play Snake for like 10 minutes, and you get this whiny blonde haired, and he's, you know, Rose, I love you, we're VR training, is this real? I hate that kid. He whines so much. What good is a sword that could sorcery? I want to pick one that I really do consider as one of my favorite games that most people just see it's okay or you know pass by it and that is GoldenEye Rogue Agent for the GameCube. When people talk about GoldenEye games they rarely ever talk about this one and uh, which is a shame because this is a really good game and it's one of the few GoldenEye games where you actually get to play as the main like as a bad guy so it's just a different perspective on the GoldenEye series. It has really it's pretty good graphics especially for the GameCube slash PS2 that it was out on and also, he has a golden eye, hence the name of the game. Um, but it gives you special abilities where you can kind of like look through walls, where it, so it has like heat seeking and really fun game. And I think it often gets overlooked by most people when they think of the Golden Eye series. So make sure you don't overlook this one; it's really fun. So you may notice we asked some YouTubers the same questions. We just want to know what they think and. Uh... Matt chose GoldenEye Rogue Agent, and I told you, Lester, that's a good game. I showed him a pickup, Lester thought it was bad. I thought it was good. Yeah. Just as good as Nightfire. It's funny how, like, this versus thing. Karate Champ. That was good. Arcade and Nintendo, I love that game. There's different types of That was the one in Bloodsport, right? Yeah, yeah Blood that was the one in Bloodsport. You like this kind of fighting, huh? Yeah. You want to see some real fighting, you can see me fight at the Kumite. Karate Champ. You have fighting spirit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt loves 90s and 80s action movies too, so we're going to throw a bunch of those in this video. You'll notice that. I want to say River City Ransom, but everyone plays River City Ransom. Totally rad. Play that game. That's a game. If you can't afford Little Samson, play Totally Rad. Kind of the same concept. I liked it. You got different powers and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Maybe you want to capture us and torture us to death. When I thought of this one, the main series that stood out was the early Resident Evil games. Just because when I think of scary, it's I don't really think of blood and guts or scary, I think of more like that atmosphere where you're like locked in a building, you're isolated, you don't have much hope, and you have very limited ammo and resources and stuff. That makes it scary because you actually have to conserve bullets. The Resident Evil, the early ones at least, really did that well and there's a reason so many people like this series, and that's just because it actually builds that atmosphere really well, so. Yeah. What is the scariest place in video game? Lester, you can go first. No, you go first. Yeah. Silent Hill, the first part of it, when you're in the dark alley, and all you have is a crowbar. Crapping my pants. I didn't want to go further. Ghosts and monsters. That's freaky. Silent Hill, Silent. good one. I've never even passed it yet. That's how scared I was. Grant me revenge. If I had to pick a Holy Grail, it'd probably be Clay Fighter's Sculptor's Cut. I already have the cartridge for it, which I was lucky enough to find for like 15 or 16 bucks. But the box and manual can be really hard to find and really pricey. So if I had to pick a Holy Grail, 
it'd probably be getting Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut uh, complete in box, and just because, yeah, it's getting really hard to find. It's funny how, like, games, like Earthbound, the game itself is, like, what, 200 bucks, but the box is, like, 300 bucks, and the manual is 200 bucks. That is ridiculous stuff. My one holy grail that I would probably never get is a Street Fighter Alpha 2 arcade cabinet. The original. For space sake, for money sake, whatever. It's, I don't think I'll even find one for cheap. I bet you it'll be a grand. Probably. Yeah, in this market. Not bad, kid. There you have it. Thrift Dollars versus 64-bit Matthew, our good friend. We like him. How did he do today, Lester? He did awesome. He's one of the first channels that we saw on YouTube, and uh, it's funny how I, you randomly run across someone who literally lives like a town away from you. It's crazy, and we became pretty good friends, I'll say. Actually, I text him a lot. Oh, do you? Yeah, I texted him today with some insistent Stop that. <laughs> so yeah, that's my two cents on all those two questions. Thanks to the Thrift Dwellers for having me on their uh, Versus series. I really like the idea of it, and I'm glad that and honored that they asked me to be a part of it. So, thanks to them, thanks to you guys for watching this, and I'm 64-Bit Matthew. See you guys next time. So that's it. 64-Bit Matthew versus the Thrift Dwellers is in the can. He did awesome. Please check out the channel. A lot more versus videos coming out, and uh, lots of pickups and all that stuff. So thank you very much for checking us out. Uh, subscribe to Matt, subscribe to us. Comment, please. please. We would love you to comment with your answer to these questions or even a video response. Anyways, that's it from us, Nate, Lester. I don't know how else to sign off. <laughs>